Hey there, this is lesson four and it is on mermaid's anatomy. Are you ready? Before starting, I wanted to tell you that since the anatomy I use is based on my own imagination, I'll be talking about the structure rather than the muscles, the bones and so on. In this way, you'll be able to repeat the structure and apply it to your own designs. So, you'll be able to see how it works and I think it will make things easier. So, shall we get started? Yes! As you can see, I'm drawing the upper body of a person using the mannequin technique that I've also used in other courses. So, you might have seen this before. Well, it basically consists of drawing the joints and straight lines to connect all the points, as you can see in here. Also, there are wooden mannequins that you can find in art shops and that they are really useful for this course. Regarding the tail, what I usually do is drawing the part closer to the hip wider than the inferior one. At the end of it, we'll be adding the fish fin we want. Another tip when drawing the fins is thinking of the fish we want to imitate so that we can reproduce the same structure on our drawing. Okay, so I'm gonna make it smaller and move it to the corner so that I can analyze this stuff clearly. The exercise I'm doing now is about the volumes. This will give us more options and interpretations to study and create the tail motion. So, if you do circles from a smaller size to a bigger one, you'd probably get something similar to what I've done in the illustration on the left. What I'm going to do now is creating a new layer while I'll be addressing the two possible sexes of mermaids. Because mermaids are not only women. So, male mermaids are also known as tritons. Right now, I'm going to draw the basic anatomy of a mermaid. Well, it's just a mermaid to show you what I've just done. So, taking the mannequin structure as a starting point, I'm going to draw the breasts, the arms, joints, and here the tail. I would like to mention the fact that not everybody interprets the mermaid's tail in the same way. I'm not a huge fan of basing myself on a specific style. However, you realize that there are many mermaids drawings in which the knee joint is kind of reflected on the tail. And thus, they swim moving or bending the knees. In my case, I prefer maintaining the shape of the fish on the tail like I'm doing here in this case. But in future lessons, I'll use also the other options so that you can see what I mean. Well, now we have done the division between the human body and the fish tail, we are going to apply it to a male mermaid. It is a triton. I'm going to give the head to use it as a guide. So guys, what's the main differences between these two models? Well, basically that male's chest or torso is wider and presents masculine features. So I'm going to draw a voluptuous chest and well-defined muscles. I also think it's important to make the Adam's apple bigger Add volume to the arms and use geometrical shapes rather than curved. So here we have the two mermaids we just made. A man and a woman. And here you can see clearly the different parts of their bodies. I know it's not that difficult, but you have it here anyways. And now I'll be comparing the anatomy of a fish with these two models. To do so, I'm going to use this orange fish to see the different parts. So, here we see the dorsal fins, the gill and the tail. 
Now, we can use this image as a guide to add details we consider interesting or necessary for our mermaids. For instance, I'm adding diverse elements to the male character that can be of great help when creating the final composition. Perhaps in the case of the female mermaid, it's not that necessary to add details since it's obvious that she's a woman, she's a female mermaid. And what about the fishes? Well, I always pay attention to their geometrical shape. So if you have a look, you'll see that they have a well-defined shape, like a diamond. And what I tend to take as a reference when drawing mermaids is basically the tail. This is the most important part for me. Let's talk about the tail now. Like I was telling you before, I talk about it from a point of view. It is, I'm working with the tail as it was an extension of the vertebral column. Let's imagine this is the axis of the waist. This part over here would be the tail and this other would be the different possible movements our mermaid could do depending on the position of the column. Afterwards, I'm going to use another color to emphasize this. As you can see, it has restricted movements, basically because the tail, as we said, is an extension of the column, so it can't bend much more than that. Let me give you an example using a drawing so that you understand better what I'm referring to. Okay, here we have a skull, and this is the column. Well, this part I'm drawing here is a prolongation of the column which is connected to the tail. And this, I just draw, are the possible movements regarding the column's anatomy. So, it wouldn't seem real if we make our mermaid bend so much that it would look like she's going to split in two, right? Oh, guys, wait, I just created an octopus, okay? Wasn't it about mermaids? Anyway, I hope you understood my explanation. I'm going to use different cases so that you can see other examples which you can apply this structure to. You could also take as a reference any other animal to see the body positions and motions, movements. For instance, dolphins or whales, whose tails are similar to mermaids, at least to those we are familiar with, obviously. So, they could be of great help. Again. You don't need to base your drawing on a fish. You could take any other aquatic animals, like mammals. As I was saying, dolphins and whales are great. I really like these animals, too. Apart from these, there are other aspects or elements that can be added to our illustration, but they are just optional. These are small details, like the fins, which can be added to the hands so that they make swimming easier. The key here, guys, is playing around with point of views and perspectives and trying out different options. Perhaps you could watch a video of a sea lion, for instance, to see clearly and understand how these animals move and swim, and then you can reflect that movement and its body structure on your drawing. So, this lesson has come to an end. See you in the next one.